Hey everyone, welcome to this quick tutorial where I'll explain the difference between statutory and underlying results and which one you should be paying attention to. Okay, so firstly, when would you see these two terms, statutory or underlying? Well, when you see statutory results, it means that you're looking at a financial report or financial statement and you're seeing something that is in line with accounting standards or commonly accepted accounting principles. When you look at something, when you look at a financial report and you see the word underlying, typically what it means is it excludes things or it's not necessarily in accordance with accounting standards or principles. So what you'll often see when it comes to underlying is what the companies want you to see. So they may have had a, a poor uh, period of performance, so a poor six months or yearly result. And what they may do is they may exclude items which they believe are once off, quote unquote, or non-cash. They're probably the most common types of exclusions from the statutory or the commonly accepted principles for accounting. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, I, I, I might make that sound a bit um, like, they're, like they're trying to hide something and in of, oftentimes they are but it's not always the case. Sometimes companies provide underlying results because it provides a better see-through of what the actual operating performance of the company is like. So for example, if a company makes a big acquisition or sells a big part of its business, so let's say it's a conglomerate and it sells one big chunk of its business, obviously it wouldn't be right to look at the performance of the entire business throughout the entire year if it sold part of that business. So they might present underlying results, um, underlying for the core business, or they might say um, have a item which is a non-cash item, for example, that um, uh, they might have an asset that was revalued and even though that asset is revalued, let's say it's a building or a piece of equipment, even though that is revalued, it doesn't necessarily mean the underlying business is performing any better or any worse just because an asset got revalued. So there are instances where it does make sense to focus on underlying, but just you as the analyst or you as the investor need to understand what is being excluded and why it is being excluded. And then based on that, you could probably make an assessment of the business, but also management's integrity and their candor and um, how genuine they are when they're presenting results to that say underlying. Okay, so some of the common underlying uh, I guess um, reported items that you'll find in a financial statement are things like EBITDA. So EBITDA or earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization, it's quite a mouthful. We've got a separate video on that. But EBITDA is a commonly quoted metric that isn't actually in accordance with accounting standards. So oftentimes when you see this reported, they, the companies themselves will actually have to report another metric um, on the same page or in the same statement. But this is a statement that, this is an example of an of a underlying metric or a metric that is commonly used as underlying. So they might say where we had normalized EBITDA or underlying EBITDA, but really you can apply normalized or underlying to any type of metric. So you might have normalized revenue or normalized sales or normalized profit or normalized earnings. You just really need to focus on what is being excluded and why it is being excluded. Now conversely, on the other side here, we have what is uh, in accordance with accounting standards and these um, items that you might find on say the income statement or even the balance sheet are in accordance with commonly accepted principles and standards. So you can compare one uh, item from this period to the past period or even uh, across companies. So a commonly reported accounting standard in Australia is uh, that's a statutory result is uh, something called net profit after tax or NPAT in the United States you might see that written as net income. Uh, they're really just the same thing. Another thing that people might, uh, another way that people might refer to this is net earnings. So earnings is just the same as profit normally. Um, sometimes people use the, the language a little bit differently to mean something called EBITDA or closer to something called EBIT. But uh, net profit after tax is a statutory metric. And when you see that in um, an annual report or in a half yearly result that's um, audited, you can generally rely on that as being the final bottom line figure for profit. Now, as I said, the key message in this video is although underlying is quoted often by companies in the commodities or resources sectors or in sectors that are asset heavy, so they have a lot of assets on the balance sheet, it's important to understand why management is focusing on one or the other and whether you think as the investor or analyst think it's reasonable. Is it reasonable that a company excludes one-offs if there's a one-off every reporting period? Well, then maybe it's not just a one-off. Maybe it's actually part of the normalized reporting of that business. 
is a non-cash item. For example, if a company writes down the value of its assets, so not writes up, but writes down the value of its assets, is that reasonable? And what I mean is somewhere on the line, cash would have changed hands for an asset. So if it's not reasonable for them to exclude that non-cash item, um, is it actually a cash item that they've actually incurred? They're just reporting that it's fallen in value a few years later. You as the investor, you as the analyst, just need to understand why management are presenting these results to you and not these results, and whether you think that's reasonable. I'm Owen Raskovich from Rask Finance. You can find more educational videos like this on the raskfinance.com website.